Young lady, my son is a prince. A prince! The queen screamed. There is no way I will allow him to marry any stray cat. Habiba got so angry, she stood up, wiped her tears, and as she was about to leave, she faced Queen Aisha and she said, I should give you a piece of my mind before leaving. My name is Princess Habiba Adamusambo, daughter of King Adamusambo, the great king of Katagum Kingdom. If not for the war that wiped out my village and took the lives of my dear parents, people like you will not have the joy of tearing me apart with words. Habiba revealed as she struggled to stop the tears dropping from her eyes. When Aisha and Prince Ahmed were surprised to hear this revelation, I have heard so much about you and would advise you to marry your son and stop hiding under the guise of finding him a perfect girl, Habiba thundered before storming out of the palace. Mm, and what if she's a princess? Should that make her so rude? This is exactly why I said you can't marry that girl. She has a temper. Mother, I think you were too harsh on her. I have to go after her, the prince said while rushing out. He ignored his mother who kept calling him to come back. Prince Ahmed couldn't catch up with Habiba, so he decided to go to her house, but she wasn't there when he arrived. He waited from that afternoon till night when she returned. After several hours of waiting, Habiba finally came home. She was surprised to see the prince standing in front of her house. What are you doing here? She asked firmly. Is it a crime that I have come to see you? Prince Ahmed replied. But your mother made it clear in your presence that I am not suitable for you and all you did was watch Habiba fired back. I am sorry about how my mother treated you. Let's go in and sort this all out, please. Ahmed pleaded. You are no longer Habiba couldn't finish her words as she rushed aside and vomited heavily. Prince Ahmed rushed to help her, but she instantly rejected his help as she pushed him again. She got the urge to vomit again and felt so weak and light, the prince had to help her inside this time. He got her water, changed her clothes, and took care of her that night. The following morning, Prince Ahmed summoned the palace physician and it was confirmed that Habiba was pregnant, carrying the precious seed of the prince. She was so sad about this news because she had no intention of getting married to the father. Prince Ahmed, on the other hand, was overjoyed with excitement at the sound of the news. He got so excited and gave Habiba a kiss. Why are you so excited? Your mother doesn't want us together, remember? Habiba, this is good news. Of course, I can't contain my joy. Please, don't worry about my mother. She knows a royal baby belongs to the royal palace, Ahmad said joyfully. Habiba looked displeased. Every minute she pondered if she should just run away with her unborn child. Her mother's word kept ringing in her head. When Habiba's mother was alive, she always told every maiden that had ears that it is dangerous to have an in-law that does not love you. Habiba was confused because it is quite clear her future mother-in-law hates her, but she is pregnant for her son. This was a dilemma she suffered for days. I don't want my child to be without a father, but will I be able to cope with this hell on earth of a marriage? Because marrying into a family where your mother-in-law hates you is very serious problem. Habiba kept asking herself as she ponders on what next she will do. Prince Ahmed 
hurriedly rushed home into his mother's chamber to share the good news with her. But the queen almost fainted upon hearing the news. It was like her world was crumbling before her. How dare you do this, Ahmed? She yelled at him. You are a disappointment, a disgrace, and a betrayer. With all I have done for you, this is how you intend to pay me for all my sacrifices. She ordered him out of her sight and out of her chambers and told the guards not to let him in. Ahmed pleaded with his mother from behind the door. Mother, please listen to me. I need you at this time in my life. Take him away! She shouted, sobbing deeply and wondering what she would do. For over a week, Ahmed tried to persuade his mother into understanding the fact that he truly loves Habiba and would like to be with her and their unborn child. But the queen was resolute on her decision. She would not shift ground at all, no matter what he said. She was so convinced that Habiba would take her son from her. When Ahmed's plea with his mother fell on deaf ears, he decided to talk to his father, the king, even though he and the king have not been best of friends right from his childhood because of the way the king had treated his mother. But he knows that the king loves him and should be able to talk his mother into allowing his love for Habiba to bloom. Upon entering the palace, the king welcomed his son with an open arm and immediately asked everyone in the palace to excuse him and his son for he saw that Ahmed's countenance was not good at all. What is it, my son? Is there anything I can do for you? Ahmed knelt before his father, the king, and sobbed. Father, I need your help, he stuttered. He narrated everything that had happened to the king. The king was moved by compassion for his son and was determined to help him, though he knows his wife, the queen, is very stubborn and cannot easily be convinced to change her mind on what she had determined to do. The king called together the village chiefs and summoned the queen the next morning into the palace for a meeting. When Queen Aisha arrived, she was greeted by a solemn gathering of the most respected members of the village. The king welcomed her and he began by appreciating her for all the good work she has done in raising their son to becoming a responsible man. After praising and appreciating her, the king then paused and there was a total silence in the palace. Everyone gazed at each other no one altered the world. Then the king cracked his voice and he told his wife of his son's love for Habiba, his desire to marry her. He pleaded with the queen to reconsider her stance and to give her blessing to the marriage because it was important for the prince to be there for his wife and their unborn child. At first, when Aisha refused to listen, her heart was hardened against the pleas of her husband and all the village chiefs. But when she saw that her objections were falling on deaf ears, when Aisha pretended she was ready to give her blessing. But in her heart, she swore to make Habiba's life a living hell on her. And so, the preparation for the royal grand wedding began. Queen Aisha began to devise a plan to sabotage the wedding. But first, she had to gain Habiba's trust and make her believe that she had accepted their relationship. One afternoon, to the greatest surprise of Habiba, Queen Aisha visited her in her home with tears in her eyes and she apologized for all the mean things she had done and said to her. She claimed to have had a change of heart and wanted to make amends before the wedding. But deep down, Habiba wasn't convinced to the sudden move by Queen Aisha. But she believed that everyone deserves a second chance, especially someone who is going to be her mother-in-law. 
so she forgave her for all the hurtful words and they hugged each other. A week to the wedding, Queen Aisha offered Habiba a big part of her quarters in the palace, asked her to move in with her for a smooth, easy preparation of for the wedding. Habiba was hesitant at first to accept this offer, but Prince Ahmed told her, it will look like you are still angry with my mother. So two days to the wedding, Habiba moved into the chambers that was given her by the queen. The queen welcomed her with a big smile and an open arm, as if to say she is now a friend. And as a gesture of goodwill, Habiba decided to show her how beautiful her wedding dress looked. She had spent weeks searching for the perfect wedding dress and finally found one that made her feel like a princess. Habiba carefully pulled out the dress from its protective cover and held it up for her mother-in-law to see. It was a stunning white gown with intricate lace detailing the beads and ornamented stones that adorned the dress. When Aisha's eyes popped in awe at the sight of the exquisite dress and she showered Habiba with loads of compliments. Habiba beamed with pride, grateful that her mother-in-law was finally starting to come around and accept her. She carefully returned the dress to the closet in one of the rooms. When Aisha grinned wickedly, her devilish plan was starting to come together. At dawn of the wedding day, she snuck into the chambers she gave Habiba under the cover of the dark night, making her way into the bedroom where the wedding dress was kept. And with a malicious glint in her eyes, she opened a big bottle of red oil that she had brought with her and began to pour it onto the delicate fabric of the dress. As the red oil seeped into the lace and silk of the gown, staining it irreparably, the wicked queen felt a rush of satisfaction and she gave a wide smile. She was convinced that by ruining the dress, she could put an end to the wedding at least for some time before coming up with a more fertile and permanent plan. In the morning, as Habiba stepped into the bedroom to get ready for the most important day of her life, her heart sank at the sight of her ruined wedding dress. I'm in trouble! This is trouble! She screamed! Tears welled up in her eyes as she realized that her dreams of a perfect wedding had been shattered in an instant. Habiba's friends rushed in as soon as they heard her scream. They were all shocked to see the beautiful wedding dress in such state. They tried to pacify their friend who couldn't stop crying. Prince Ahmed was informed by one of the friends and as he stomped over to the scene, his mother followed him. Queen Aisha asked, what the problem was, and her son briefed her. She screamed as if she wasn't aware or as if she wasn't the perpetrator of the horrible act. They got to the scene and Prince Ahmed tried his best to console his wife-to-be. Habiba, today is our wedding day. Please, stop crying. Habiba screamed, today is our wedding day and my dress, my beautiful dress is ruined, Ahmed. And as she looked at the entrance of the room, she saw a mother-in-law sticking out her tongue at her and wearing a mocking smile. And it clicked in Habiba's head that her mother-in-law was the one who had destroyed her wedding gown. Before words could come out of Habiba's mouth, Queen Aisha rushed towards her. I'm sorry about this. Oh, only a monstrous human being is capable of doing such an evil, the mother said. Habiba pushed her mother-in-law with force and Queen Aisha landed on the floor. Everyone was shocked to see this. You are evil. You did this to me, Habiba screamed. Habiba, what has come over you? 
Prince Ahmed yelled while trying to help his mother out. Your mother destroyed my wedding gown. What did I ever do to her? Abiba asked. I know what happened to your dress is cruel, but you didn't have to pin this on my mother. Ahmed thundered. When Aisha was leaping for joy inwardly, her plan to cause confusion and problem between her son and Habiba on their wedding day was yielding good fruits right in front of her eyes. Suddenly, she started to cry. Why would I do such a thing to you, Habiba? I accepted you and I love you like my own daughter. I don't even stay in this part of this chamber. When Aisha said, building on her webs of lies. No one believed Habiba, not even her friends. They all felt she was just finding fault in someone or looking for someone to blame. If I am getting this horrible treatment before marrying your son, what will be my fate after the wedding? Habiba cried. This sign is big enough for me to run. There will be no wedding, Habiba added firmly. They all started begging her not to cancel the wedding. The king heard of what had happened and summoned Habiba to the palace, hoping to get to the bottom of the situation. The king listened intently as Habiba explained everything that had happened. She told him about her wedding dress and how no one had believed her. She also shared her suspicion about the queen, Queen Aisha, being the culprit. The king was shocked by the accusation against his wife, but he couldn't ignore Habiba's pain and disappointment. He promised her that he would get to the bottom of this and find out the truth. He also pleaded with her not to call up the wedding with his son. He assured her that he would make things right and ensure that she had the perfect wedding she had always dreamed of. Out of respect for her father-in-law, Habiba agreed to continue with the wedding and immediately the king ordered the palace guards to fetch the best dressmaker in the land. Prince Ahmed was waiting for Habiba outside the king's court and as soon as she stepped out, he apologized for making her angry and tried to convince her that someone else ruined the dress, not his mother. In no time, a new wedding dress was made for Habiba and as the wedding guests started to arrive at the palace, Zainab, the only family Habiba had left of her mother's family, also arrived. Habiba was surprised to see Zainab. You made it to my wedding. It's been two years since she saw her aunt and it made her feel so emotional. With the help of her friends and the new wedding dress from the king, Habiba was set to get married to Prince Ahmed. It was indeed a colorful wedding that left the entire village spellbound. The king also gave the new couple a beautiful mansion as a wedding gift. This made Habiba so happy because the thought of living with her wicked mother-in-law sent shivers down her spine. Two days after their wedding, Prince Ahmed and Habiba moved into their beautiful home. Queen Aisha was very angry about her son being far away from her but being a master manipulator, she used every trick in the book to ensure that her son remained completely devoted to her. She would pretend to be sick, asking Ahmed to come over to her house every day to take care of her, leaving poor Habiba alone and helpless in their home. Habiba, being pregnant with their first child, found herself left alone to take care of herself and the pregnancy while her husband catered for his mother's every whim. One hot afternoon, Habiba, now six months pregnant, was busy cooking. She heard a knock on the door. Her mother-in-law, Aisha, stood at the entrance with a sickly look on her face. Come on, mother, Prince Ahmed said, concerned evident in his voice. What is wrong? Are you feeling okay? When Aisha coughed dramatically and stumbled into the kitchen, clutching her hand on her chest. Habiba knew it was all part of her trick to keep her husband all to herself and away from her. I think I have a fever, when Aisha said. I need you to take care of me. 
Prince Ahmed immediately sprung into action. Habiba bit her lip in frustration as she watched her husband dot on his mother while she struggled to stand on her feet by herself. Queen Aisha shot Habiba a mocking look, knowing fully well the power she held over her son for the next few days. Queen Aisha made herself at home in Ahmed and Habiba's house. She refused to lift a finger to help around the house, claiming she was too weak to do anything. Instead, she demanded that Prince Ahmed wait on her, massaging her foot and hands, bringing her meals in bed and fluffing her pillows. Habiba tried to keep her cool, knowing that Ahmed felt obligated to care for his mother. But as the days turned into weeks, her mother's behavior became increasingly unbearable. She made smart comments about Habiba's cooking, criticized the way she decorated the house, and even went so far as to rearrange the furniture in the house. Hmm. But the worst part of it all was how Queen Aisha monopolized her son's time and attention. Every spare moment he had, he spent with his mother, listening to her complaints and tending to her every need. Habiba felt like a second-class citizen in her own home, pushed to the sideline while her husband lavished all his attention on his wicked mother. One day, Habiba had finally had enough. She confronted Prince Ahmed about his mother's behavior, pouring out her frustration and begging him to see how his mother was manipulating him. But Prince Ahmed was blind to see his mother's faults, choosing to believe his mother over his wife's protests. I can't believe you were treating my mother this way, Prince Ahmed said, glaring at Habiba. She's sick and needs help. Can't you see that? With tears in her eyes, Habiba stormed out of the room. The following day, when Aisha saw Habiba eating, and immediately she said, No wonder you look so fat. It is because you eat too much. Don't finish my son's money. Habiba felt triggered, but tried to keep her cool. She pondered day and night, thinking of a solution to the nightmare she had found herself in. Her mother-in-law is making marriage a living hell for her. She complained about everything, called her a bad cook, dirty girl, fat pig, and every mean thing you could think of. But above all, her husband doesn't have her time despite her being pregnant. Three months after Aisha finally left their home, Habiba was finally having a bit of fresh air and eagerly waiting the birth of her child when her mother-in-law struck again. This time, Queen Aisha went to the extreme to ensure that Ahmed will never leave her side. She connived with the palace physician, claiming that she had a terminal disease and only had a few months more to leave. Ahmed, devastated by the news, immediately rushed to his mother, leaving Habiba alone in their home. The same night, Habiba went into labor. She found herself faced with an impossible choice. She was unable to reach Ahmed who was busy attending to his mother's supposed illness. But Habiba was a strong and determined woman, and she knew that she had to fight for herself and her unborn child. With the help of the two royal guards stationed at their house, Habiba managed to make it to the midwife's place, where she gave birth to a beautiful baby girl. As she held her daughter in her hand for the very first time, Habiba felt a surge of strength and determination. There and then, she came up with a plan to solve her problems with her husband and his mother. When Ahmed finally arrived at the midwife's place, he was greeted by a beautiful sight he had never expected. His wife, tired but triumphant, holding their newborn baby in her hand and standing beside him with a look of shock and dismay on her face was Queen Aisha, her husband's mother. Habiba looked at her mother-in-law with stained gaze, her voice unwavering as she spoke. 
I have tolerated your wickedness for far too long, but no more. I will not allow you to come between me and my peace of mind any longer. As you can see, I have a bundle of joy to take care of, Habiba said, referring to her newborn child. Ahmed, we are leaving this village and starting anew in a different place. You can choose to come with us or you can choose to stay with your mother. The choice is yours, Habiba added firmly. Torn among the three most important people in his life, his mother, his wife, and his daughter, Prince Ahmed was confused, but the choice were clear. His mother, who was terminally ill, according to the palace physician, or his wife and their newborn baby. What do you think Ahmed's choice will be?